Hello, my name is James Clark from the Department of Physiology at King's College London, and in this brief tutorial I'm going to run through the steps required to retrieve a recording that has been made of a delivery of a lecture through Microsoft Teams. If you follow the guidance notes and the previous tutorial, you should receive an email from noreply at microsoftstream.com telling you that your content is now ready to stream. The lecture we recorded during the previous tutorial was delivered to me a few minutes after finishing the tutorial. Within the email there is a link to your lecture. By clicking on this link it would automatically open up microsoftstreams.com and the lecture that you recorded will appear on the screen in front of you. When you open the video in Microsoft Streams on the surface it looks like any other video sharing platform like YouTube or Vimeo. You'll notice your video is on the left hand side of the screen and on the right hand side you'll see a transcript. This transcript will activate automatically as closed captions if you choose to start your video by clicking on the video I'm going to mute it for the time being and then clicking on the closed captions icon. By default my login is automatically selected to turn closed captions on and you'll see that the closed captions appear on the bottom of the video as the video runs. However, Microsoft Streams isn't exactly the same as YouTube and these videos are not publicly available. If you wanted to share this video complete with its closed captions with students, you would have to click on the share icon slightly below the video and you would have to email the individual students you wish to invite to see these closed captions. This is particularly useful if you know there are particular students that would benefit from having closed captions on your lecture. Otherwise, alternative sharing methods are available. So now we want to get this video into a platform that the students are more used to using. For instance, the Echo 360 platform that we already use to deliver all our lecture capture material. At the moment, this video is hosted within Microsoft Streams. But when you scroll down underneath the video, by clicking on the More Actions button, we can choose to download our video. For those more advanced users, you will notice there are other options in the More Actions button, including the ability to trim or edit your video, update any video details, and do other Microsoft Streams actions that you may be familiar with. However, we want to download our video, so we click on Download Video. Automatically in the background, your video will download to your default download location and the video will be saved. In my case, my video is downloaded to my Downloads folder in my personal account on my computer. Once you've checked that the download file has appeared, you can close down the Microsoft Streams website. And you can close the email. Now, in a browser window, you want to go to echo360.org.uk. Once you've gone to this website, you'll be given the option to log in. Use your King's email, not your K number, to log into this service. Once you've entered your email, you have to choose from which institution you are logging in, and of course in our case, it's King's College London. Once you're logged in to Echo360, you will notice you have access to all of the lecture content material that's been recorded for any module over which you have any control for about the last five years. However, at the moment, we're not interested in looking back through previous lectures. We want to add our new lecture to Echo360 so the students can have access to it. So to do this, I click on the Upload button. You can choose to upload from your local computer, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, OneDrive Business, or a Box account. However, since we've downloaded our video to our local computer, we're simply going to select files to upload. Here is my test lecture, and I choose to choose that. Some lectures, if they run for many minutes, may be many hundreds of megabytes in size, and I appreciate that some bandwidth may be restrictive. However, these will all upload and I've tested files up to 500 megabytes in size and they upload absolutely fine. So once you've selected your files, you may want to upload multiple lectures at once, but in this case we're just going to upload the one. You can click on the Upload button. Be patient with the internet and allow the file to upload. Now I receive a notification to say that my file has uploaded successfully. 
In order to access the lecture you have just uploaded and put it into the right module, you'll need to click on the All Content tab, and it's quite possible you might need to sort by date created in descending order. In other words, show the most recent files first. And here we are. Test lecture, the one I just uploaded, is here, 2 minutes and 19 seconds long. If I click on it, I'll be able to view this lecture in Echo 360 in the same way that the students will be able to view it. However, at the moment, this is not available to any students on your course. So you'll need to scroll down and click on the Add to a Class button. The Add to a Class brings up a Share Settings and I want to then enter the module and select it. I want to select the current term and the current section. In most cases this will be the 1920 term, section 1. Since Echo 360 hasn't been set up to accept this as being a lecture, we didn't previously book this for instance through the lecture capture system, we'll need to set up a new class. And so I'll call this new class test lecture tutorial. If you want to, you can assign a date and a time to it, but that doesn't really matter. You can make it available now or time it to be available in a number of days' time, and you can also have it so there's a closing date. But I think current policy is that we leave things open the whole time. Once we've made sure that our module code, term, section and class name are correct, we can click on the share button. You can add it to multiple classes to make it available to multiple students and you'll notice that these are listed here within the share settings. I'm now happy with the settings I've made and I can log out of Echo 360 either by choosing to log out or just simply by closing the window. Now we want to check that our lecture has successfully been added to the student's lecture capture list. I've logged on to Keats and gone to the module to which I uploaded this. I can now click on the lecture capture link from within the lecture resources and if I scroll down to the bottom you'll see test lecture tutorial is now available as part of this module's lectures. You'll note I didn't note the time and date of the recording and you'll see that this field is left blank. If I'd chosen to fill that in it would have appeared here as it does for the other lectures. You can of course delete or edit this file in the ways that Echo360 already allows you to edit your existing uploads. So I hope this helps in getting your lectures up onto Echo360 to allow the students to view recorded live streams.